in Shar Al of Parakeet Zion. We began it on uh, last week, and now we'll learn it. Remember that our discussion until now was um, Nara, Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, which is not just um, three components to the Neshama the way we learned it at the very beginning, the first few Prakim and Nefesh of Hain. But um, the Neshama, that's an amateur. So neshama is for, <laughs> that's, not, that's not explaining what it is. Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama is the three parts of the Neshama. And the way it works, let me just remind you, is where let's let's I mean just let's just imagine the neshama for a moment we were making a chart of this is the neshama there's three parts to it the uh, highest part is the neshama the middle part is the ruach and the lowest part is the nefesh that's where we are nefesh the the, the humanity of a person and um, it's all about ba'ipach ba'ap of nishma time that Hashem blew life into our nostrils so the way that worked was um, Neshama is connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Ruach brings the wind down, Ruach, into the Nefesh. All different, as I pointed out, than um, the way Balatanya explains this. Balatanya explains this differently. He holds the Neshama right there, all of it. Uh, but the Nefesh Chaim is adamant about the fact that, no, the Neshama is just the top part of the Neshama, which is not, that's the part that connects to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Um, that's way up here, out of us, out of body. And then there's the Ruach, and then there's the Nefesh. All we have is a Nefesh, which is getting its, thank you, which is getting its sustenance or its life, its for, source of life from the Neshama. So we're learning Nefesh Achai, so let's learn Nefesh Achai. But I did, we did spend time comparing the two. Um, uh, you know, there was the, the Lushen that was used is that the Balatanya feels that uh, feels. I mean, his, his Messiah was that um, we all have a little bit of Hashem in us. That's Musa Yisbarach Petoich Adam, which is in Hasidic language, uh, you know, t- spoken about as the Pintaliyid and the, you know, little bit of God within us. And um, but the Vilna Gaon did not hold as such, and he thought it was very dangerous to do that. Uh, if you start with that, you start getting close to worshiping people, um, and. Uh, <coughs> And it gets involved with Simpson. So what then? Um, we have a nefesh. A nefesh. So the nefesh Chaim gave a, a, an example to the to the glass blower, if you recall, right? The glass blower is the Moshel Hakadosh Baruch Hu. He's blowing into the pipe, which is the ruach, and it's coming out as into into the glass, which is the nefesh. So nefesh ruach neshama. Says the says the nefesh Chaim here. It's important there should be a hiskashrus, obviously. You know, like if the wood pipe blower, if the glass blower is blowing into the pipe, and it's not a pipe, but it's a chalil, you know, like the air is coming out here, the air is coming out there, so you're not going to get any glass or you're going to get a very weak product. It's got to be a very solid pipe where it just all the wind goes through. Um, the only place where the wind exits is at the end. So it's also very important, like when you're blowing shofar, that you uh, position your mouth correctly. And also, by the way, the, the shofar is a good example because that is the api kabbalah. That's what a shofar is. The shofar is you're taking your your um, what you are, the depth of what you are, and you're blowing it out into a sound. So, and that's why you're not allowed to have a hole in the shaifer or a pagam in the shaifer. It's the it's the same thing. So it's very important that everything is aligned, yeah? Like, uh, his kashris, let's call it in our language, alignment. So the alignment of the blower, the, the windpipe, and the nefesh, the alignment is very important, otherwise you don't get a good result. So his kashris, he says his kashris, I'm saying alignment, same thing. Hagimel b'chinas naran echad b'chaverei hu yisoy ve'ikar inyan hatshuva. And here he introduced, as we spoke last week, a whole new idea is really this is what shuva is all about. Shuva. We think of shuva is you do an avera, you do shuva. No, <laughs> it's not. It's, in other words, you do an avera and you're you made some kind of a you broke something, and now you do shuva, you fix something. That's the way we look at shuva. So he says, 
he doesn't say that's not tshuva, but he says the Iker in that tshuva is the realignment of the nefesh, ruach, neshama. Ze kol pri hasar achatois me nefesh achatois. Tshuva removes the chet from the nefesh, ulatahara michelas tumasa, and it's matayar the nefesh again, Michelas Tumasa. So here what, what we're what we're really saying is that Shuva is a realignment. And uh, what are we realigning? We're realigning our Kesher with Hashem. So a whole new way of looking at things. If you do an Avera, um, it causes a, a separation between us and Hashem, not a separation is the wrong word, uh, uh, misalignment. a misalignment. Disconnect. Disconnect. <laughs> the air is coming out here. Um, it's, not, it's not connecting. In other words, there's the, 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 the Shaba, you know, it's not, give us an example of technology. In other words, you have the Shaba, you have the Ruach, but it's not, you know, like is, if this is not right here, so if it's here, so you're not getting the full Ruach. Now, just because you didn't have air, it doesn't mean that you're completely disconnected. Or, but, but the idea is every air misalides you a little bit, so you're a little bit dead. The, the, uh, you know, like the plant's not getting the water. The, uh, your system is not getting the, your, the air. Your blood is not circulating. Right? Take, take whatever example you want. Everything is good, but boom, it's not getting to where it's supposed to be getting. So, so that's what a misalignment is. I think, by the way, um, that's that's what uh, chiropractors do, yeah? Supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> so they, yeah, no, I'm not here to debate that. I'm just saying that the, 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 concept, the concept is alignment. In other words, the concept is not, the concept is that the nervous system goes through your spine, and then because, uh, for whatever reason, if you're misaligned, so now you're, your 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 nervous system is not working correctly so by by doing a chiropractic adjustment so now everything is flowing correctly alignment alignment the same same idea that's that's what alignment is whether it works or doesn't work is not the point but that's the that's the the idea of alignment your, your radio receiver is not tuned to well to the station it's all no you're not catching the waves okay so um is, is, is tshuva Kapara, which is a covering up, or is a mihuk where it's erased and it no longer? According to this, neither one. Meaning, like, let's look neither at one? Yeah. According to this, what we're saying is that before you understand what shuva is, you have to understand what an avera is. So, so what is an avera? Chet. What's a chet? A chet is taking away some of that wind, some of the tzelam elikim, some of the nishmas chaim that I should be getting. So, a person's a tzaddik, you're getting complete um, kabbalah. So. You see, I, I just, um, I, w I want to explain this, uh, this Marsha, I want to, I want to say it again, because I think it's appropriate, like, the, the, um, obviously there's two dinim in an Avera. Like, let's say, let's say he kills somebody. So the guy's dead. Dead, that's pretty real, right? Thank you. So he's dead. Um, now, um, the issue that is that, that well now I uh, I broke off my relationship I'm now misaligned. <laughs> the issue is that the guy's dead. You killed somebody, you hurt somebody, you're bazik somebody, whatever you spoke lashon hara, whatever whatever you did to somebody else, or even in the world of another labako, <coughs> you've done something, you created damage. So um, the issue is not really alignment only, but um, true the guy is dead. But there's another problem here, and that is that I have lost my Kesher completely with HaKadosh Baruch or almost completely because I killed somebody. The whole Sefer Tehillim is, I, I, I said this controversial remark a number of months ago, uh, controversial meaning everybody controversial with me, that uh, the, 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 most of the Sefer Tehillim is David HaMelech expressing his Tsar over the Chet that he did with Bathsheba. That's most of it. Shuvi nafshi li mnuchayichi, Hashem gamal alayichi. 
uh, over and over again, and he felt that somebody of the usurp that he had was because of the chet. So what he was talking about is not Bathsheba. That worked out good. Her clients were over Bathsheba. Gave out Shlomo Bell, but he did something which he felt which um, uh, changed his relationship with Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Therefore, changed his malchus. Therefore, changed his whole the whole nature. And what we have in Kabbalah, at least in the Hasidus, is that it was actually brought him closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as sometimes a chet has the ability to do, like Makim Shabbalei Tshuvayim, Dim Sadikim Geburim, Edom Yichelim Lamed Shem. So, the, but it was all, it, the, the issue wasn't Basheva so much, you could even go so far as to say, I don't get into this philosophical point, but you could even go so far as to say, even if he killed somebody, well, he killed him. Obviously, it was Bashert that he should be dead. But that doesn't have anything to do with my Avera or my Kesher with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That doesn't have anything to do with it. So um, it's about the Kesher. So the, the Gemara says, um, Hirhure Avera Kashin Be Avera. It's Gemara in Hebrew. Hirhure Avera Kashin Be Avera. If you, if the, the, what does that mean? So uh, you can learn it two ways. You can learn, like Rashi learns, that if I do an Avera, and I premeditated, so a, pre-med- a premeditated chet mm-hmm. is worse than a chet that's not premeditated. The Barsha says that's not the pshat, because that's talking about the avera with hirhurim is kasha avera. That's it. that can't be the pshat. The Barsha says. So he says that the pshat is hirhurim avera kasha avera is you have here you have the uh, the boxing ring. You have two sides hirhurim avera mitzad echad and avera mitzad sheni. So he explains. According to the Gemara that gives the scenario of the Gemara in Sanhedra, the Gemara in Abu Nazar, the Gemara in Menachos, the Gemara, the Gemara says that let's say a person um, wants to eat kosher, goes to the kosher butcher shop and everything, buys kosher, the hell of a yada maser chazir, and and he and he ends up eating chazir, right? He thought it had hashgacha, didn't have hashgacha, or thought it, the hashgacha wasn't good, it wasn't kosher. So at the end, he ate. Chazer. The Matthias says he, he did not have On the other hand, let's take person B who wanted to eat treif and accidentally ate kosher. Could also be. <laughs> right? He, he didn't realize that the butcher shop had kosher meat. So he ended up eating kosher. So I really wanted to eat treif today. But it didn't work out for me. And he even thought he ate treif. So, so here's the guy. One person has here Hure Avera. And one person has Avera. So the Marsha says this is what the Gemara is talking about. That, that here, Hore Avera versus Avera Gufa. Who's, who's in worse shape? Who's in worse shape? The one who wanted to do an Avera and didn't do an Avera? Or the one who didn't want to do an Avera and he did do the Avera? So, uh, right? If Deb's up the Gemara, here, Hore Avera, Kashin Be Avera. That the, the fellow who <coughs> meant to do an Avera, you know, like, like, you know, let's say somebody uh, shoots his wife. <laughs> so, um, but it, it, he didn't realize it was a blank, you know. So this, you know, so you didn't kill your wife. It's still not very good for the relationship. <laughs> so, it looks like it was a blank, but <laughs> that's a big deal. Uh, it might be even, you know, that might be even worse than um, shooting her by accident, but with a real bullet. I mean, there, there is no relationship left, but the, the right, so th- this is the Shiloh, like here, who are Avera, Kasher Avera. So if the issue is, says the Marsha, that um, the, the, the some kind of a point system here, or even a Kabbalistic um, Pagam that you made in the Bria, or a realistic Matthias of the guy's dead, so then we would say, that's the Avera, and either I can get out of it or I can't get out of it, but that's the Avera, or Avera, you didn't really do anything. And it actually didn't do anything. Attempted murder is not murder. But if you understand that the Pshat is that it's all about the relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so then, here, her Avera is going to be Kashem Avera. comes in Nefesh HaChayim, and in most of like this, that, that it's, if I understand it, that we're talking about alignment here. So if we're talking about alignment, so what, there, there's two things over here. There's the, there's the, the result of the Avera, and that I misaligned myself with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I misaligned. So let's call, 
for our purposes, the Avera is the Avera, and the misalignment is the Hurhuri Avera. And this is Kasha Avera. The worst of the Avera itself is the fact that I misaligned myself with HaKadosh Baruch Hu by doing that Avera. So that's the Hurhuri Avera, Kasha Avera. Um, just, just to be Marichada for another moment, the, the, um, there's a known Rebbe Chan. It's always fun to quote Rebbe Chan Wasserman and Nefesh Chaim, <laughs> but because um, the act, act Yeshiva Shevelt uh, Rebbe Chan. So Rebbe Chan brings the Masil Sharm mentioned this once. The Masil Sharm says towards the end that um, that Shuva is a, a huge matana from Hakadosh Baruch Hu, like Nachzir Linyanenu, the Indian of Shuva. Shuva is a huge gift from Akarish Baruch Hu. There's no, says the Mitzvah Zosharim, there's no logic to the Shuva at all. What does it mean, Shuva? If hare hamei smuta lefalecha, says the Mitzvah Zosharim. If, if, if you killed somebody, person, God forbid, driving drunk, he does Shuva. But look at the damage that you did. It's, it's, it's not, look at the damage that you did. So, like, Mapito, you do Shuva, that that should do anything even, that should accomplish anything. Why should Shuvah accomplish anything? This Masil Shashar says. Mikan, that it doesn't make any sense. You're not reversing anything. So Masil Shashar says the answer is Zerzakasim, that this is the beautiful Chidush of the Matana that Hashem gave Chayisrael, maybe even all of humanity, not sure, um, of the Indian of Shuvah that you can reverse. But you're not reversing, really. You're not reversing anything, but what are you reversing? You're reversing, I guess, your relationship with Agarish Baruch Hu. So, so Rabbi Chanan asked the question, Rabbi Chanan asked the question, and you have us. Um, he, sa- he says, that, why is this such a big chiddush? You find uh, the Gemara says that if a tzaddik does mitzvahs all of his life, and then he regrets to having done mitzvahs. Yeah, that was stupid. Why do, why do I waste my whole life doing mitzvahs? So it's Kilo, he never did a mitzvah yama. So says the Gemara. It's a Gemara. Toyal, you got to be very careful, by the way, that uh, if you ever do a mitzvah, that you feel like, you know, you shouldn't have done that mitzvah. It was too much for you. So don't be Toyal, you never, you never regret a mitzvah. Like, one should never regret the mitzvahs that you do, because when you regret the mitzvahs, so you've undone the mitzvahs. So Rebbe Chanan says, what's the big Kiddush of Chufa? That, that you you could undo something that you did, you see that even if you did something good, you could undo that too. So he says, um, he brings a Ramchal, but we could bring a Nefesh Achai, that, that <coughs> the Chiddush of Tshuva, if you did, if you did a mitzvah, let me just try to say this over correctly, if you did a mitzvah, or you just lived your whole life doing mitzvahs, and then your Toyal or Rishainais, so obviously, you're you're not you're not reversing anything. He brings the Rav Chal. It's not that you're reversing anything. You've cut off the 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 lifeline. You've misaligned. To use our words, you've misaligned yourself. And the chiddush is even everything that you've done is going to die, like a garden that you went spent years and years planting and maintaining, and now you're not watering it. You're not taking care of it. Everything's going to die. So Toyal Rishad is once you cut the pipe, you cut the pipe. But Shuva, that's 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 not so much about harata, that's about you cut off the pipeline. Shuva, there's a chiddush of Shuva that even after you cut off the pipeline, you can return it and be Mason, these plants. Even the go even though the guy's dead, right? All right, right? The, the guy's dead, so you're not you're not re- you're not reversing that. You can't necessarily reverse the damage that you've done, but tshuva has a chiddush. And that's that's what Rebbe Chana says. That's what the Masil Sishar means. That tshuva has a chiddush that it can restore or realign the the the, the person with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. But again, you see this tremendous important yisoid that. There's two dinim in an Avera. One dinim in the Avera is the damage that you did. And that might be a fact. And by the way, the based in Shabbat or the Sanhedrin, their job is to deal with the damage that you did. That's a reality. Meaning, uh, 
You can't go to the Sanhedrin and say, okay, I killed the guy, but I did shuva. And they say, we hope so. You know, <laughs> or Hashem, you did shuva. Now please get in line and we're going to execute you. Shuva uh, <laughs> shuva doesn't stop that because because the the execution, the Dalabis the, is based in, is there to take care of the of the chasari that was made Baha'i Alba in the world of Nefesh. Shuva is you're realigning yourself with the Kaddish Baruch who's so good, we'll kill you and you'll, you'll return to your creator in whole. But in terms of the damage that was done, I, I would even go so far as to say that possibly the carbonos, where, where does that fall? The person does not very brings a carbon. So, so the carbon, everybody knows, um, needs tshuva. You can't bring a carbon without tshuva. So what a carbon needs tshuva, what's a carbon for? So, you see, you see again, there's there's two dinam and an aver. There's the din of the tshuva, vidui, and there's the din of the, the the damage that was done. The damage that was done so that the carbon somehow rectifies some of the damage that was done. It's not going to help if you killed somebody. There it doesn't help a carbon. In other words, if something is in fact um, irre irreparable, so then a carbon, in fact, doesn't help. You don't bring carbon when you kill somebody. Yeah, yeah you're the carbon. <laughs> you, you're the carbon. Uh, but our um, is based. There's certain things that carbonists don't don't change. But as much as we can change the Messias, so the carbon is changing the Messias. By the way, they think that the Ramban says what I'm saying before. Should uh, the Zaktama to to, to Vayikra. I think this is what he says, that the, the tshuva is masak in your relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and the carbon is masak in the chet, the pagam of the chet. So, and, and, and if you're going to be, but here the chiddush is more, if you're going to be masak in the pagam by a carbon, and you're not masak in your relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so lovely rives yivcheche, Baruch Hashem, it doesn't, what did you do? Like, like it, it, they have to work, biyacha, they have to work hand in hand, in order for the whole um, situation to work. So, okay, everybody with me on this? Does this fit with what you pre one said about the Sar Mesh that there's like two things going on, there's like the Kabar and there's also you have to, or is that completely? Uh, I think it's exactly the same. Oh, okay. <laughs> the only thing is I don't know what I once said. Oh. Something well means left. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Ruch you know, you'll hear the mouth you had said that Shuga doesn't, it's not covering and it's not total erasure. What, what did you mean? What, what, what is what, what Shuga, is Shuga is all, the, uh, Shuga Lashem. So the, 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 right, the, the whole idea of Shuga is not necessarily, I'll just say it again, is not necessarily to undo the Avera. The idea of Shuga is to restore your relationship with HaKadosh Baruch. So if you look at the Kalyama, it's a tshuva. Even though we always talk about being masaki in the chet, right? <coughs> we always talk about being in the chet, but, the, but even if you're not masaki in anything, the Rambam says, the, the Rambam says even you can't, you can't, there's nothing to be masaki in. I'm 150 years old, I'm going to die. Do tshuva, ish b'zev ashuva. includes things like you guys are a rabbin, so the things that you could be sucking are nechlab tshuva according to that. They're ma'akiv is tshuva, you're asking what's that lotion? That lotion shows that, yeah, in other words, the examples are for instance, uh, you, you go in there from, and you can't be restoring. So restoring what you stole is a chelik of the tshuva. Right. In general, in Benon Mochaveri. Like, if you don't, uh, um, you're already way ahead of me. Just say, say it simpler, even. Let's, the, the Rambam seems to be mashma. Um, it's mashma, no, not a little early. That the Rambam says that if you, um, if you hurt another person in any way, so you have to ask him mechila. That's besides for doing tshuva. Mm -hmm. So, meaning, like, if you hurt somebody, Stole from somebody, you spoke much and hard about somebody, so you have to be Meshavis Akzela, and that's not good enough, you have to do Tshuva. So it's for sure 
right? So, in other words, until you're Mesha Vesagzela, is that the Mashmais to me, the Rambam, is until you're Mesha Vesagzela, so the Chuba doesn't do anything. Not that you haven't done complete Chuba. How can you align when you're still hurting the person? Right. The, the idea of asking Mechila, Arab Yom Kippur, you know, Michael, Michael, Michael. Okay. <laughs> the, the idea of asking Mechila is that that's a, uh, a restoration of the relationship. And now that that's straightened out, I can do tshuva. But the, the Mashmoy says without that, the, the tshuva is, is, is nothing. Right. That's, so, that's what equal means. So I think that's what I'm not, not, not that it's a chelik of the tshuva, but it's monea the chalos of the tshuva. Right. Uh, it's the famous Meshachachma. The Meshachachma asks why the brothers of Yosef restored their relationship with Yosef. Came back to Mitzrayim. Loyatem shalachtim. I see Haina. Hashem sent me here. And yet, they keep on paying for this. Um, this this chet of Sarah uh, Malchus, etc., that came from the so the Meshachachman points out because never where never there in the Torah does it say that Yosef said Machalach. Mm-hmm. Some technical point, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know. Forgot to ask him Machil. <laughs> it was it was he he understood again. You see two dinim, you know. He understood that everything that I went through. Hashem sent me here. Everything that I've gone through in the last 22 years, you know, it's okay. You know, it's okay. It, it, it worked out okay for me. It worked out okay for for, for Yaakov Avinu. It worked, it worked out okay for all the future generations. It's right. So what if we're now going to be slaves in Egypt? Okay, it worked out okay. Uh, but but in terms of that, you hurt me. So that's a that's a different story. I don't, you know. I don't have to be mindful for that. So the, the or he wasn't mindful, maybe he didn't have to, but he wasn't mindful for that. So it comes out that the whole that chet still lingers with us. That the not the chet of causing Yosef to be a Mitzrayim, but the chet of hurting Yosef. That the, the the intent. Similar on a on a the hero. Right. What, what, what I'm trying to get at, I'll, I'll, I'm confusing you because I'm probably confusing myself, but what I'm trying to understand is that on a Benam L'Chavera, there's also two dinam to the Chet. But in that case, in the case of the Benam L'Chavera, also the person becomes like God in that sense. In other words, you, you, there's two things. You could be Masak in the Chet, I stole money from you, I give you back the money. But but there's another problem here that I, that I stole from you. Like the, It's a different thing. For that, you have to ask Mechila. So even if you're Masak in the Chet, and I give you back what I did, and I undid what I did, it's not good enough unless you apologize. So it's the same thing. Is that it, it doesn't help without, without the mechilos. So it's the same thing with HaKadosh Baruch You can be Masak and Mechet somehow, and that doesn't mean you did tshuva. And on the other hand, you can do tshuva. It doesn't mean you're Masak and Mechet. But the tshuva, the word tshuva is in the department of Hirhurim, of Hirhurim Avera. So you have to have Hirhurim tshuva. The same lashon is used. Where I'm realigning myself with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. I'm sorry. What? Why do we have to get so fancy with with uh, worrying over what the consequences and ripple effect are? The consequences are the consequences, like the Rav said before. Is that the person's dead in front of you, or generations will be damaged from what you did to Yosef. Mm-hmm. Those are the consequences. Chuba, okay, Chuba is part of the process of realignment, and we have a responsibility to go through in an honest way the process of Chuba and to realign. That doesn't mean that the consequences go away. No, they do the you consequences. Well, because because sometimes you can get rid of some of the consequences, but I agree with you 100%. It's, it, there is such a thing. I'll be Kabbalah. Um, there's all kinds of um, tikkunim that you can make on the actual thing that I'm up here, but that's not what Shuvah is. Shuvah, maybe that's where they spoke about, the whole Masech speaks about making Tanesim and giving Tzedakah and all kinds of tikkunim that you can do for Chatoim, so Mikubolim and Hasidic Sharabbas, they're experts at telling you, um, you did the Savera, this is what you need to do to be Misaki in the Pagam. Okay, that's very useful information. Uh, uh, you know, if you know how to be Machaya Mason, go for it. It's like that's, uh, that's a good thing. But that's about Chuba, that's not about Chuba. You're not going to the, to the Mikubol to do Chuba. To Chuba, you go, um, 
your eye made lifnei Hashem to do tshuva. But what this is not to be confused with what um, there was in the olden days. We don't do it anymore. Some seems to have gone. People would go to a, a, a tzaddik or even a rav. I mean, I mean to say, uh, even if the rav is not a tzaddik, <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they would ask him. Um, What's my tshuva? I did this and this. You, you find in the Shailas and Shuvas farm, um, full, some soifer, no debihuda. You find full of these kind of things. I had an affair. I cheated on my wife. What should I do? You know, it, it, it could be could be like uh, his wife doesn't know about it, so it didn't violate the relationship. As far as Hakadosh Baruch Hu goes, so of course you have to do tshuva. But what, what we're talking about is that there's a certain pagam. And they spoke about it, you know, roll in the snow, give uh, $18 to Dukkah, whatever you do, you do. But, but that, that's not to be confused with Shuva. That's Tikkunim. And we don't, I, I saw in, um, in one of the Achrenim that we don't do that anymore. I don't know what happened to it. We don't do that anymore. We don't look for, like, uh, almost like you're saying, Shmuel. Like, we, we don't do it anymore. Like, uh, consequences are consequences, and, and you, have to, you have to eat the consequences of what you've done. And, and is that hope? And is this a relevance of the story of the person who came from America to speak to Ram Shanda, the person who knocked out of someone and killed it. Yeah, remember? <laughs> that was different. In other words, you killed somebody by accident. There's so much to say here. Well, let's get to the story. You know, I don't want to bow everybody down here, but it's um, <coughs> Kayin, a Kayin. Uh, so we learned on uh, Shabbos. So Kayin. I was, just, I, was, I was just talking to somebody who told me that he went to um, Agav. He went with, uh, he's a Rosh Hashiva, actually. Um, and he went to Raden, like, you know, to see the uh, the cover of the Chavetz Chaim. Uh, um, so he went to the cover of the Chavetz Chaim, and he, told, he was telling me that he got lucky. And a man came, an old man came with all of his children, grandchildren, or whatever. And this guy had actually, um, Learned by the Chavetz Chaim, well, 20 years ago. So, um, so he <laughs> was able to tell him. You know, they, they went to Dab and they covered the Chavetz Chaim. So he said, "They come with me. This is the yeshiva. This is the Chavetz Chaim's house. This is uh, this is where we played soccer, whatever it was." He showed showed him the whole uh, rotten, um, and they had like this. Uh, he had this like unexpected um, tour. A uh, uh, rotten that he would never expect to get, and he showed that there was rotten, and this is where the Chavetz Chaim down. There was also a shul. Like it wasn't the, the, the Chavetz Chaim wasn't the rub of the shul, and he wasn't the rub of Radin, he wasn't the rub at all. It was Chavetz Chaim, separate, separate thing. So he said that um, Chavetz Chaim was a Kayin, and so people didn't always daven with the Chavetz Chaim. They daven along there. This, this guy told, he says, but when it came to Yantiv, and the Chavetz Chaim did Birchas Kohanim, so the whole city came for Musa for Birchas Kohanim to get a bracha from the Chavetz Chaim. So uh, it was like a Let's see her. So um, I'm, I'm I'm feeling that nefesh ruach neshama. That's what I'm the reason I'm telling you this. <laughs> like like birchas kohanim is also a gather of alignment, uh, or it's, it's an alignment of nefesh ruach neshama. So in other somehow or another the chavetz chaim can bring this. Just to get back to our point, chavetz chaim or tzaddik uh, tzaddik the kohen in general has the has the ability to bring this. Um, hashba into the world, or you can walk away from it. You stand on the side of the coin. If you stand on the side of the coin, then you're not uh, getting direct uh, hashba from from the coin. So it's all about the realignment. So it's That's just the progression of the three yeah. yoyer, and Yisa. Very good. Um, uh, Rabbi Nachman talks a lot about mm -hmm. the that Yifurim, that the the the, the godless of it coming to your mind and pushing it away. So it's 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 going to come, but the, it, there's no like why would the hero be worse? It's like it's a, it's a chance to say no. I'm I'm going to. It's a good thing. Yeah. Right. Um, I tell you, tell you just something with that, and with this will end. This is very interesting that the the, the Mishnah Bura, <laughs> Mishnah Bura, um, and help us to feel it. So he says just something I think about all the time. He says that um, if something. Um, the middle of Shmarnasrei, so it's like this is like a, a, 
an unbelievable thing, like a miraculous thing that you're in the middle of Shmonesre, you can have machshavas that you would never have <laughs> the whole day long. But yeah, all of a sudden, like I'm worshiping a or doing <laughs> like like Dafka, like, like Ome oh, Lipnei Makom. So I, I would imagine that the that the psychological um, shot in it is that um, you know I'm just stopping to think, you know, and I'm concentrating and I'm opening my mind. So Dafka, the person who's davening with Kavana, um, is open and prone to all kinds of. Uh, Machshavais Zarais. So, but the Chavetz Chaim says it's like it's an interesting, uh, interesting but see it's like that, that, that Dafka. You know, if I wouldn't go to davening, I never have these thoughts one or the other. You know, every like in the middle of Shmonesra, you think, wow, I wish I would kill that guy. <laughs> like a, like a Shmonesra thought. So, um, so the Chavetz Chaim says, if you have the thought, it's like Mishnah Berurah. If you have the thought, just is it, just wait a, wait a couple of seconds till it passes and go fight it. Don't uh, don't don't fight with the thought. Those are the thoughts. Time. And then he says you should say the pasuk leiv tar bar lili kim ruach nachin kadosh bekirbi. That that helps. There's usually another one back to back though. Hmm? There's usually another one back to back. <laughs> So um, no, it, it, it always intrigued me. This comes out. Like, don't fight with it. Don't fight with the thoughts. So in Shem Olam, another sefer of the Chavetz Chaim. So there he writes. He brings this. He brings this with more arichas. I saw this years after I saw Mr. Burr, and he says that uh, very similar to what you're saying. That that if you um, have a thought, so you have a thought. So it's it's. Um, it comes, it goes. A human being is a human being. Things pass through our minds. You know, you know, you can't, you can't uh, beat yourself up for being normal, right? That's what you are what you are what you are. People have all kinds of rabbis, rabbis, love each. But if you take it, and now you integrate it, and you say, "Why am I having this thought? And, and what did I do to have this thought?" And you make a whole. Now you've made the thought into something more gashmius than, than it was before. You take a lamaisa, and and that's much worse. Than just letting a fleeting thought go through. So you could ask a question theologically: Why is the thought going through? It? Okay, I don't know, but but whatever it is, it, 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 such such things happen. But to take it and to and to and to work with it and to play with it and to, to find it sometimes with um, even uh, I'm not I'm not making saying opinions here. I'm just saying some I have seen where even therapy can make something worse. Mm -hmm. You agree with me? That's, that's sometimes like you know just. You know, like it's okay, like you know, you analyze it, and talk about it, and, you know, this, and that, you know, it, uh, particularly couples therapy. It could be wonderful. I mean, you could say it saves many, many marriages. But sometimes, um, you know, like oh, I didn't know you felt that way. <laughs> and, and, and talking it out is not necessarily the right thing because what you're doing is you're, you're, you're gosh, I mean, I'm not saying get therapy, not there. I'm not, I'm not getting well. I'm just saying that like sometimes integrating. The, 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 the thought can make it even worse, which is what or not, let's use the opportunity to say goodbye. That's all. Let's use mm -hmm. use use the opportunity. Okay, so a sikum litvarengu, and then we'll go further into understanding this deeper, is that it's it's all that it all comes down to chuba. There's one last thing the, the, the Chazal says it's a and um in Veschana. The the Medrashraba Veschana says that Moshe Rabbeinu Hayo Isaac Pachuva Tamik. So the Pashib shot is that he was Isaac with Shuvah Tamid his whole life. So the positive shot is that he was Isaac with Shuva because of the Misa of the um, the main Mariva, the Selah. He couldn't go into Eretz Yisrael, and he was doing Shuva. But if you read the Medrash carefully, and this is what all the Mepharshim say, no, he was Isaac with Shuva without that. He was just Isaac with Shuva. That was a mitzvah that Moshe Rabbeinu did. What was he doing Shuva? He didn't do any Averis. So since Shuva is about Realignment. So it was like um, it's like doing exercise, even if you're not sick. So so what? That's good. You know, not just maintenance. This is this is health. This is what Moshe Rabbeinu was constantly aligning and realigning. I mean, understand that in a very human way. He was constantly checking and realigning his relationship with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. You have to do an avera. Avera could be uh, positive in the sense that it causes us to. Realize, wow, we better realign. Like I scared myself. I can't believe I did that. You know, how how did I do such a thing? I better get a realignment going over here. But Moshe Rabbeinu, mean, without the Aver, was 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 always aligning and realigning and realigning and realigning without even being misaligned, getting it getting it tweaking, tweaking his relationship with Hakadosh Baruch. It was a very real thing, just tweaking the relationship with Hakadosh Baruch. And Aver is a stia, but but. The tweaking is always there, and that's the nefesh ruach neshama that the nefesh chayim learns with each other.